to me, and this may sound funny, if we learn, we're winning. That's the win. That's the big win. We've, we've already proven that it can be done, and I know that we're getting some long-term wins from the soil health side. I'm Susan Ainsworth. I'm an agrologist who specializes in potato production, and I own Stolen Glance Agronomy Limited. We're on very sandy soils on this farm. Great for growing potatoes, easy to dig through, nice and sandy, not a lot of rocks. The challenges that come with that though are obviously um, wind erosion is a concern, leaching is a big concern. One of the other issues that we have on this sand, specifically because it's very black, is that the soil temperature itself on the surface gets very, very hot. And so in the potatoes, especially in the Russet Burbank, we get a lot of heat runners. And so we talked about, do we change our row spacing to try and compensate and get quicker row closure that way? Or, you know, are there some other alternatives to try and improve our soil, increase some organic matter so we can get some better water holding capacity, better nutrient holding capacity, um, maybe improve some compaction issues which are also a problem on the sand. We've included tame buckwheat and peas as the, the other two crops in with our potatoes. We planted a bushel of each and we did that by floating it on with a Valmar prior to hilling. And so incorporated with that hilling pass and then obviously everything is under irrigation so we had the ability to then water that right in and had really, really great uh, germination. The reason we've included these two species is really some diversity of, of root systems but also the pH on these soils tends to be a little higher than neutral and so we do get some phosphorus tie up with calcium here and so if we can improve our phosphorus mobility a little bit in the soil with the buckwheat then that's a win for us and then obviously with the peas trying to fix some some nitrogen in there as well. So we wanted to try, you know, our regular rate of what we would use on our, our normal russet crop and the same rate that we used on the field that's adjacent to this one. And so we do have a strip of, of that rate. And then we also have two reduced end rates. So one that was fairly significantly reduced, so almost a half rate. And then one that was sort of a mid rate in between there. And we're adjusting as we go probably at the end of the season, we'll end up with sort of a full rate in and then probably two treatments that are at a 70% in. But uh, we are able to compare very different rates up front and you know what the impact was to the set in doing so. And we've learned a lot even by looking at that so far. This is a real proof of concept sort of thing, something that we talked about doing for a while now. And as we were talking about it in the winter in the office, finally decided that the best way to kind of answer a lot of our questions was to just try it. And so we did have an impact on our heat runner, so that was a win. Fortunately, we've got another field that's just on the section next to us south that doesn't have a companion crop that was planted on the same day. And so we were able to compare. It's been really interesting to kind of see See how upright the potatoes stay. They are very shadowed in the treatment with the lowest nitrogen rate and certainly the plants are significantly smaller. So the biggest difference is reduced set numbers in the field without the companion crop due to the heat runners. There is some concerns about harvestability and those are real concerns when you look out here. I mean it doesn't even look like a potato field. Anytime you can learn something new it's exciting and, and so pushing the limits a little bit and being a little bit vulnerable to be judged because we're very used to judging one another on having very clean fields. And I think trying to sort of step away from that and look at a more holistic approach that hopefully improves things long-term and improves the re resiliency, I think is exciting as much as it is maybe a little bit scary, um, but I just think, you know, let's try something new. Let's see what we learn. If it's a failure, that's still, you know, one of the steps on the way to success. We're still learning. So, so that's exciting to me.